so that it organizes the chaos in your head. But also, if you have people asking questions like, hey, what's our budget looking in Q3 or Q4? You can easily answer those questions. So what you can see on the screen right here is actually where you can get a calendar template. And I'm gonna highlight this button here to get template. When you actually click that button, what it's gonna do is it's going to create the template you're seeing on the screen right now inside of Monday.com. Now, if you're not familiar with Monday.com, it is a project management tool which will allow you to organize the chaos that is business. And I understand this because I'm a former marketing director, so I understand what it's like to be in your shoes. So the template you're seeing here, this is pretty close to what it is out of the box. So if you click the link in the description, it'll bring you to this template. Um, Monday.com does have a 14 day free trial so you can mess around and see if this is the right tool for you. But I just like it because they have so many great templates, but it's also really easy and intuitive to use. So the way that it works is over here, this is our board, right? The marketing strategy board. Then you have groups. So group one is Q1, group two is Q2, Q3, Q4 is in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. And then you have the um, items. So each item is a row right here. So that might be another marketing initiative. So I'm just gonna write uh, marketing initiative, which I probably spell wrong because I'm doing it on the fly uh, as usual. And then uh, you can add different things in here. So you might wanna assign who this is going to, person one. If you wanna have a conversation around that initiative, you can write it in here. And I highly suggest you do that because the nice thing is, is if you have somebody that comes uh, in and off the team, that new person can then look at each individual item and be able to see like a history of that communication. So it's, you don't ever wanna do this in email. So then what you can do too, is you can create a goal for this and you might wanna edit labels. And then um, if you wanna create a new one, you can just, you know, I'm just gonna call it new goal and then create it as a new label. And then the brainstorm is also really helpful because what you can do here is um, if you wanna brainstorm, uh, you can do it from a doc, you can do it from Google Drive, wherever. Um, if you want it from a doc right inside of um, uh, monday.com, you can create a doc and then have a brainstorm document for this uh, specific uh, thing that we're working through. Now, I don't wanna get too far into the docs and brainstorm and that, because you can figure that out, but one of the things that's really important is understanding different views and then also all the things that you can do inside of the columns along with filters. So one of the first things I wanna talk about are views. So your views are up here. We're looking at the main table view, but you can do a timeline view, which gives you kind of like everything to the left is in the past, everything to the right is into the future. So if you're visually um, oriented in this way, this is a, a view that you may wanna look at. Some people wanna see it actually in a calendar view, right? Uh, one of the really cool things too is this uh, template comes with this, what's called its quarterly budget um, uh, right here. So the way that this works is this is actually pulling information from uh, your uh, table over here, your main table. So it's pulling this information and you can see that in this column here, we have budget. So it's pulling the budget information as well. So this is really powerful because let's say the CFO or somebody's like, hey, what's our quarter three budget looking like for marketing? You just look at this and you say, hey, it's uh, $3,200. You can actually create a custom benchmark. So let's say they tell you, you know what? We actually have more budget than that. It's gonna be $5,000 per quarter. I know that's really low, but we're just throwing numbers out here. Um, super easy to go in and be able to adjust things on the fly. Now, you'll notice that there is nothing for Q4. Uh, when we were looking at that, uh, the quarterly budget, there's just the three of them. And all this updates in live time because it's a cloud-based platform. So let's say we click on this one that I created here, item XYZ. I'm gonna go down to here. Uh, and I'm just gonna move this and I'm gonna move to group and I'm gonna say, I want this in Q4. So now we have an item which hasn't, hasn't been filled out completely, but it does have a budget item there of $2,000. So if I go back to the quarterly budget, now you can see all four quarters are represented and it's $2,000. You can get into the weeds too on this. Um, if you go down here, uh, let me see where it is. Uh, the budget, that's where we're pulling the information, but you can do some, you can do average, medium. So if you hit some of these buttons and change it around, uh, it'll change uh, what it looks like. So cumulative might be helpful, right? Because this is what Q1 looks like. But if you wanna see what Q1 and Q2 looks like, so then really what Q4 is representing is the entire year's budget as well. So you can get into the weeds on this and really kind of customize this to your own needs. Now, one of the cool things too is you can create a custom dashboard. So I started setting this up and basically you can add widgets. So let's say you're like, I like the Gantt chart view of projects you can add this to your dashboard. So that might be like your command center that you log into to get a snapshot of everything. And what you can see up here is uh, the total budget, $8,700. Quarter one budget is 2,500. So let's say you wanted to see, you know, uh, quarter two budget on here as well. All you'd have to do is go to duplicate 
And then what it's going to do is it's going to duplicate this quarter one budget. And then we're going to click settings. I'm just showing you this as an example to show you how easy this is to use. So when you go to choose groups, we no longer want Q1, we want Q2. And then we're going to go up here and we're just going to call this Q2 budget. And then that's all we need to do. Close out. And there you have total budget Q1, Q2. You have your marketing calendar beneath here. There's so many different things that you can do in this. And I'm just really scratching the surface of the possibilities. Now, I did mention earlier too, a really important feature is um, filters. So there's a lot of data that you can look on here. I mean, this is a pretty simplified marketing strategy here, uh, just to kind of uh, explain this template for you. Uh, but things that are really important are stuff like this. So like, let's say you have high priority, medium and low, right? So if you end up with a ton of different things going on and you're like, hey, I just wanna be able to see my high priority items, what you can do is you can go to filter, all right? And then priority here, and we're just gonna click high. And when you add that filter, then I'm just looking at high priority items. So super helpful because there's other things you can do too, because you can create your own columns. So why don't we do one that's a status column? So status, stuck, working on it, done, and you can add extra labels. Again, this is really helpful because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear uh, this filter here by clicking this X. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna throw some statuses, uh, working on it, working on it. Uh, I know this is kind of out of order because we're going into the future. Uh, but again, I just wanna highlight how powerful this is because really quickly now, uh, just like that, I created another um, column, which is gonna show up at the far right. Cause you can see that these are in order of what's on your actual screen. And then I just wanna see what's stuck. So then as a manager, you can chime in and be able to see what's stuck. Do you need to comment on something? Do you know, do you need help? Whatever it may be. Uh, the last thing I wanna talk about are workflows. So these are really powerful. Um, I've gone in and actually already created one, but basically what a workflow is, is, a, is an automation, excuse me. So one of the easiest ones is um, when column changes, notify someone and create an update with this text. Uh, so in this particular one, I can create this and then uh, let's say that I want to notify people if a timeline changes, right? Timeline being like when a project is due, because perhaps there's somebody who's on that. So um, I will just say the item name, because that's what the row view was, right? Item name, um, timeline, I think that can be uh, one right here as well, um, has changed. So uh, that's going to be, and I'm going to copy this because I want this to um, notify. And then the someone who's uh, gonna be uh, notified is subscribers. We're, in, we're gonna go with um, uh, item subscribers, right? So not everybody on the board is gonna see it, just people who are subscribed to that item. And then create an update with this text. I'm gonna paste this in here as well. All right, so create automation. So just like that, what we have now is, and I already built this before, so I've kind of duplicated this, so we might wanna turn that off. Um, what we have now is if I go in here and let's say we're working on, and I'm gonna clear this filter. Again, this is really helpful just to see how this tool works and how easy it is to use. Uh, but I'm gonna click on timeline here. And then let's say you know I change this, it's still on the first, but we're extending this to the 18th. Just like that, what's gonna happen is an email is gonna be sent out to anybody who is subscribed to this specific item, all right? So if they're part of this uh, project, they're gonna need an email that this has been updated. And then what it does is it saves you those extra steps from having to do these updates now, because you know that these are gonna be firing automatically when you make those updates. There's other uh, workflows that you can do too, where you know, let's say a status is changed to done, okay? So maybe um, you wanna move and create a uh, separate group um, and then make it uh, finished projects, right? And I wouldn't recommend this for a uh, calendar budget like this, but I just wanna again show you how the uh, automations work. So we go to workflow and then what we're gonna do when status changes something, so status, and then we're gonna go to um, select a uh, sub item. I think it's this one. When status changes to done, then move it to group finished project, create automation. So let's see if this works. So I'm gonna go in and say that this uh, increasing uh, conversion rate optimization, we were working on it, now it's done. And what you'll see is it's gonna happen in real time here. It's gonna probably take a second or two uh, before it's gonna push down to the bottom of the page, uh, but this should move down to the finished project. Why don't we refresh and see what happens? All right, you can see, still see that it's sitting here. So it's like, why, why did that not work? So this is where you can kind of troubleshoot. So what you can do is you can go into uh, your active workflows up here, all right? And then what I wanna do is go into this one. Why did that not work? And I think what it was, was there was two different statuses to choose from. I wanna go to this one, and then I'm gonna update workflow. 
and then I'm gonna see if that maybe does the trick. So sometimes you do have to kind of troubleshoot it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say stuck, and then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna say done. Now let's see what happens now. So that's what it was in that particular case. There was a sub item status, but we just were able to look at it and figure that out. So now that that's gonna be moving down here immediately. So this one, this is also important, was already done. So that didn't move. It's just for things that are gonna be, the automation is for things that happen in the future, not the things that have happened in the past. So now if I move this one to done, it should just take a couple seconds there and it's gonna to move to done. And we can also create automations to let people know that, hey, this particular project is done. And you can do that, right? You can message people based on a status. So I won't go into the full thing, but you can create uh, custom workflows. So it's like when this happens, status changes, uh, and then uh, two, and then I'm going to say done. I'm going to make it this status, right? We're not going to make the same uh, mistake. When status changes to done, then uh, let's see if we can do message. Uh, how about email? Send email, right? So then you can see how you can build out that uh, custom workflow automation. So the last thing I want to talk about is on the screen here are two videos. One is more of a beginner's guide to Monday.com, but the one below it is an automation workflow uh, video that's going to walk you through how to do these automations. And again, in the description below is a link for this template. It is an affiliate link, so if you end up getting Monday.com, I may receive a commission. Uh, but again, there's a free 14-day trial to check out that template. So good luck setting up your content calendar and your strategy for the year. This is going to make it a lot easier for you. All right, I'll catch you in the next video.